to show you something first. First Peter chapter 4, and then we're going to go to the book of Revelation. And I'm going to try to move swiftly, so you listen swiftly, okay? And, and, um, but we have to release this because it's important. We, we need to know what the Word of God says. Where are you going to stand? You don't stand on the Word of men, you stand on the Word of God. Everything is being shaken. If you don't believe me, this morning was a good example. Everything that can be shaken, except one thing. What is that? The kingdom of God. We are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. So if we're on the kingdom, we're standing on that solid rock in obedience to Him, then we're going to be standing when all the shaking is done. Does that sound good? Good plan? But I I just wanted to show you this. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7, and uh, there's something we need to just, just help us launch into where we're going. It said, but the end of all things is at hand. Did you know the early church believed they were living as if they were the last generation to live upon the earth? Well, if they believe that, how much more should we believe that? Because they lived in the last days, we're living in the last of the last days. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious. Now, the word serious means self-controlled, be in one's right mind, be sane, be calm, be sober-minded. Much of the world is going crazy. Much of the world, I mean, you can see it every day. It's as if they've lost their mind. The church, the believers, are going to be the most sane crowd on the planet. Because he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of what? A sound mind. And so we're going to be of a, of a different breed. And then the word watchful, be watchful, means vigilant. Don't be intoxicated by the world. And uh, so the end of all things, be serious, be watchful. Verse 8, above all things, now this is important, have fervent love for one another. Did you hear what that says? For love covers, love doesn't expose, love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another. Don't grumble. There's another place in the scripture that says the judge is at the door. So don't be grumbling and be complaining. Not in this hour. This is not the hour to be complaining. It's the hour to stand on the word. Be confident in who he is and confident in who he is inside of you. But then it says in verse 11, if anyone speaks, let him speak as of the oracles of God. Now, I, the Lord gave me the title to this message two weeks ago, and yesterday, here's what he spoke into my heart. Some of you, I know you're saying now, do you hear God's audible voice? There's only one time I think I heard his audible voice. But when he speaks in your spirit, in your heart, it might as well be audible because you know you've heard from God. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. You don't have to speak some, I mean, it's, it's real. You know you've heard from God. It's like when the word comes alive. And you know God's speaking to you. That's the number one way that God speaks to all of us. But yesterday, here's what the Lord said to me. He said, you tell it like it is. You don't hold back. The church holding back is part of the problem. We're in the mess we're in. Secondly, tell it like it's going to be. Because... One day there's judgment coming, and every one of us, we will awaken to everlasting life, or we will awake to everlasting condemnation. How many of you know that? There's a final judgment coming, and everyone is going to stand before the judge. You tell them like it will be. And then you tell them the way it can be if they'll turn to me. Because the invitation is today as real as it's ever been. He said, whosoever will, whosoever's thirsty, let him come unto me. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. The invitation is still open. The door is open for people to come to him. And I believe that many are going to come to him all over the nation. Some of those that have been 
you know, loud-mouthed in the streets of our cities. They're going to come to him in this hour. And we're not going to give up on them. Now, I want you to go with me to the book of Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to read in a moment that entire chapter, and then we're going to go back and look at it. We just need to do that. But I'm, I'm not looking at this from a specific theological persuasion or opinion or what I've been taught. You know, all of us have been taught about the end times. Many people have it all figured out. They've got graphs to show you exactly what's going to happen next. But how many of you know there are things happening today that they hadn't planned on happening? So they got to fill in some blanks. They're going back to see if they may have misunderstood. I believe we got to have more confidence in Him than we do our graphs and our charts. But the book of Revelation, it says, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keeps the things that are written in it, for the time is near. Say, the time is near. That means that when the time is near, there's going to be a greater unfolding in Revelation. So you're going to be blessed if you read it. You're going to be blessed if you hear it. But most of all, you're going to be blessed if you keep it. Right? We don't want to be those that hear the word, but they don't obey the word. Because then we are deceiving ourselves, James says in the book of James. So anyway, let's pray. I need help, and then we're going to read. No, let's read first, then pray. Because I don't want anybody to go to sleep. We're not, Thomas is on the alert. He's going to be looking around. If anybody's snoring, we're going to come... And um, did anybody get shook out of bed this morning? You know, that's pretty cool. You know, if you, th this is one of those mornings if you were debating going to church, you know, 807, the earthquake, 5.1, you, you know, that may, I'm going to church. Yeah, obviously we're going to need a little more shaking, but guess what? We will. So anyway, okay, let's read. Hey, why don't you stand? Let's just stand in honor of the Word. And we don't, you know, they used to do that all the time in, in the, the New Testament and believers in the early parts of our nation's history. So I'm just going to read. So follow along, then we'll pray, and then we'll go through this. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it had been mortally wounded, and its deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon and who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Now, where is his tabernacle today? We are. We're the temple. The blasphemy against God, against the tabernacle, the temple and against those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of who? The saints. Then I saw another beast. There are two beasts in this scripture. Coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that even he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth and in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth. 
by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast and who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should, be, should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads that no one may buy or sell except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So, Lord, we just pray now for understanding and wisdom. Lord, we confess we have no knowledge unless you give us the knowledge that comes from above, the wisdom that comes from above. Lord, we are grateful for the Word of God, the Logos. And we thank you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But Lord, we thank you for the rhema, that revelation that the Spirit is still breathing over the Word of God and that we can know the things. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth and we are grateful and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. So there's a blessing. You know, you, how many of you know you just got blessed? You heard the book of Revelation. You heard it. You were blessed. The book of Revelation is a manual for the saints living at the end of the age or in the last days. And do uh, you remember about, it's been a year ago, we talked about, I stumbled across this phrase in the book of Numbers called the book of the wars of the Lord. Okay, none of you remember. Some of you do. You, surely you better remember. You're my, you better go. She does. But it was the book, and we looked it up. It was a real book that existed back in the Old Testament time that recorded the journeys of the people of God out of Egypt into the Promised Land. Now, it wasn't included in the canon of Scripture. And today it's lost. Although, I asked somebody, Brother Sadu, and he said he had seen that book. Now, he's the kind of guy that I would believe has seen that book. But for the most part, the book has been lost. But I believe that book is still being written. Because the book of Revelation, I believe, details a lot of the, the final wars and the final chapter that are going to happen on planet Earth. And you and I are the characters that are going, going to be written in that book of the wars of the Lord. Does it make sense? And, you know, we may not read it on the Earth. But when we get to heaven, whatever book was lost will be found. Now, the book of Revelation is not a scary book. Say, it's not a scary book. And you, some people look at it, and you can read some of it. It's probably not some of these chapters you don't want to read right before you go to bed. You know, there's a beast, and there's things coming up, and eyes, and I don't know. But you've got to have the right perspective. It depends on your perspective is what it really comes down to. Because the book of Revelation is a revealing, it is a revelation, it is an unfolding of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we've been waiting for all of our, for the entire church age from the Pentecost. This is it. We've been waiting for this hour, for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, but also the book of Revelation is going to detail the events that will come on the earth prior to and during his coming. Do you know the earthquake is a prophetic sign? There are going to be earthquakes in these days. He said there'll be earthquakes in different places. It's a sign. It points to the Lord, to his return. Now, the title of this is The Marks of the Beast, with an S, not The Mark of the Beast. Somebody else is going to have to go there. And there are a lot of people getting revelation. And the Lord will give us revelation. We're going to need to know these kind of things. But again, my purpose is not to give some perfectly fitted timetable of events, you know, or some exhaustive study. I'm just going to talk about some of the, the marks of the beast system that is arising. 
The beast is not coming. Now, there's a whole vein of theological mindset. This is not even going to make sense to them. Because they thought they would be long gone. Well, they're still here. To their amaze. You have two choices. You can surrender. You can run and hide. There ain't going to be anywhere to hide. The safest place is in the will of God. In Christ, get in the ark. This is the hour. Whosoever comes unto me, let him come. If you're thirsty, come to me. He will in no wise cast you out. Or the other thing is, you, and also you can stand on the word. You can know what the word says. And we must be prepared for the hour. We can't trust in what everybody has written about and told us. We need to trust in thus saith the Lord. We need revelation for this hour from the scriptures. The word of God is God breathed. I'm, I'm going to stand. I don't know. They could put me on a chopping block. I'm going to believe the word of God is God breathed. It's anointed. The word of God to me is the word of God. I believe the word of God. From that day that I surrendered to preach and I opened the Bible, got on my knees as a 19-year-old boy. I believe God's word. And I believe there's an answer to every situation men will ever face. This week I was speaking to uh, Dr. Stephen Francis. And some of you know, this, he seduced Brother Sadu's brother. And he moved not too far from here. And uh, he's a friend and he was going to Cincinnati this weekend. He said, David, I've got a message. I'm going to preach. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And the way he said it to me on the phone, it made me want to prepare. You know what I mean? It's thunder. It's like his brother. His brother. You never heard of Brother Sadu if you haven't. He thunders the word of God. And there's a fear of God when that man walks in the room. I'm usually on, my, on the deck. You know what I'm talking about. We need those kind of guys in America. He's from India. We need Americans to rise up in this hour. And when they speak, the fear of God falls into place. Because of the holy all. Not because of the man or the woman, but because of the presence of God. Anyway, he's gonna, he already preached. He's back for his church. He told me he's going to get back. He said, prepare the way of the Lord. We must prepare the people. But you prepare ye. In other words, you and I must be prepared. Not only prepare the way, I believe this word will help prepare the way, but you and I have got to be prepared. You've got to be prepared. You've got to see to it that you're ready, that you're prepared for the hour in which we're living. Now, we don't want to be ignorant of the devices of the devil, do we? Some people think you shouldn't even cover subjects like this. They must have not read that part of the Bible. And maybe they left it out. They think you can take the smorgasbord approach to God's Word. There have been a lot of that. You know, I mean, if you know that, you take and leave whatever you choose. If you don't like the way it sounds, I have a, one of my mentors. He used to carry a big pair of scissors to the pulpit. And he'd read a scripture. He said, how many of you don't like that? Here, we'll just, he picked up these scissors. We will just cut that part out and be done with it. How many of you know that wouldn't work? You could cut it all up. It ain't going to work. Now, we need to review quickly. So, and it won't take long. There's about 15 marks. Is that okay? And I'm just going to breeze through them. There's no way you could cover. I, there'll be more questions than, I have, than we have answers. But, but there's something God wants to impart. And, and when you hear the word, there's a blessing. There's a blessing. And there's an enabling. There's an equipping. I'm going to preach as if I'm preaching to the whole cotton-picking global system. And I'm preaching to the whole world. I'm telling you, this is the hour to go for it, guys. You may preach to three people in West Virginia in the woods. If you're on the Internet, preach as if you're preaching to three million people. You'll never know. There was a guy here from, where was he from? I don't know, Iowa or somewhere, wherever they were from. They have a church, I don't know, 15, 20, 25, I don't even know. He says their Internet crowd is at time, reached a million people. I said, that's amazing. God's casting a great net throughout the earth. He's tossing it on the right side, I'm telling you. The Lord knows what He's doing. He's the Lord of the harvest. And he's raising up men and women that are going to trumpet the Word. Now, there are two things that must happen before the Lord comes back. He said, don't be soon shaken. Well, unless you live today here, you could be shaken. 
are troubled in mind. For that day will not come until two things happen. What were they? The great falling away will happen. The, the, how many of you heard of the apostasy? So what do we want to do? We want to make sure, number one, we don't fall away. So you need to follow him all the way. And you won't fall away. And we want to pull as many people out of the trap and the ditch of deception. There are many lining up to give their allegiance to the beast and they don't even know it. They think they're doing God a favor. That's scripture. Jesus said that. But they're doing the bidding of their father, the devil. And they don't even know it. And then the second thing is the man of sin, a perdition or destruction, lawlessness will be revealed. Do you think any lawlessness is being revealed today? If I can find this, I can't find it. I was going to have a little fun before we get into the scary part. We'll do it another time. But there are a whole bunch of people that have been accused through history of being the Antichrist. Maybe I can remember some of them. Yeah, come here, come find it. It's, it was a text sent to me. Now, I think I can find it. Hold on. Find my name and back up. There it is, the Antichrist. I knew I could find him. He's hiding. You ain't going to hide. We coming after you. All right, now here, listen. Throughout history... Fourteen historic figures accused of being the Antichrist. Number one, Emperor Nero. I would have guessed that because that's the day he started a, the fire and then blamed the Christians. So then they set the Christians on fire and they hung them on poles. Some of the most, the most horrendous persecution. Emperor Constantius, because of his name, I never heard of him. Pope Leo X. Martin Luther wrote a note. And called Pope Leo the bull of the Antichrist. Pope Leo didn't take a liking to that. Then Napoleon Bonaparte was accused of being the Antichrist. Some of these guys, their names come to these numbers and they would add up to 666. Adolf Hitler, I could believe that. Now this one I didn't know. John F. Kennedy. He received 666 votes at the 1956 Democratic Convention and later died of a head wound. So I guess they thought that would qualify. Henry Kissinger. Now that. Mikhail Gorbachev. Remember him? He had this birthmark on his head. And they, they said if you stared at that birthmark long enough, you would see the number six. He had to be the Antichrist. Pope John Paul II. He suffered a gunshot wound and was, you know, overcame. Now, this one I remember people saying it, and it cracked me up. Ronald Wilson Reagan, 666. Six, six. He had six letters, and Ronald, six, and Wilson, six. Now, this one really shocked me, Barney the Dinosaur. Because if you somehow figure out how to get the Hebrew numbers, it came up to 666. Barack Obama. The day after 2008 election, the Illinois pick three lottery was 666. But we're getting warmer. And then Bill Gates the third. We're getting definitely warmer. And then the World Wide Web, the Internet of Things. You know, the plan is to connect everything on the planet to the Internet. Everything. Everybody. Man, if you'd have told me I was going to live in these days, I would have chosen these days. Okay, so what are the marks of the beast? Let's go back. Revelation chapter 13, number 1. There's 15. It won't take very long. We're going to pray. We're going to have ministry around the altar, pray for people. We're going to have baptism. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. So number one, the beast is going to rise up out of the sea, and that represents the sea of humanity. Now maybe, whether human or not, I know not, I just know that it's going to come forth out of the depravity and the wickedness of men. That's why men in this hour will do what you think is unthinkable to their fellow human. Because of the depravity of the human heart. 
What did Jeremiah say about the heart? It is wicked, deceitful. Who can know it? It, You look it up in Hebrew, it means beyond repair. There's no way to repair the human heart. Only God can repair it. Only an encounter with God. That's why he sent his son. He had to die on the cross to make the repair complete. But there's, there's something about, you know, this beast system, the ultimate rebellion against God. A final chapter. Men sticking their fist in the face of God and saying, we will be God. And the Antichrist will sit on their throne declaring he himself is God on the throne of their heart. There's a lot there. It would take all day to go into that. But it's man turning against God in this hour. How many of you see that evidence happening? There's a new rising with the fist in the face of God. We will determine our destiny. Well, we won't. God will. But the beast system will rise out of the sea of humanity. It's the ultimate final rejection of Almighty God. And then secondly, in chapter 2, at the beginning, it says, The beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. He was like what he would actually become even more than what he was like. And what I saw in this was, remember Benaiah? We read this last week. Benaiah is one of the mighty men of David who killed a lion-like hero of Moab. Then he faced a lion in a pit on a snowy day. Remember that. And then we, I think we saw this, that Benaiah had to face the lion-like creature first before he could face the face with the lion in the pit. Because when you're in a pit, there's no way out. You're not going to escape. You have to overcome. And that's why I think the Lord, the whole, the revelation to the letters, to him that overcomes. And then I thought about David. He killed the lion and the bear before he faced the Goliath. So God has been preparing all of us. You must run with the footman. If the footman weary you, what are you going to do in the running of the horses? What are you going to do when the Four horsemen are released upon the earth. I believe that's beginning. And God's been, in His mercy, has been training us to make us strong. The Scripture says, if you grow weary in the land of peace, what are you going to do in the flood plain of the Jordan? And so what I'm saying is, God has been preparing us to face this beast system at this time. Now, understand, remember, there's the Antichrist, but there are many Antichrists, right? There's the beast, but there is the beast system. So I'm not speaking particularly about the beast. It is the system, okay, that involves humanity that surrender to him. So understand, everybody say, I understand that. Now there's a, um, I know I have shared this dream so many times, so I apologize you get to hear it again, but there's a lot of people that have never heard it. There are a lot of people watching. They're going to watch, so I have to share it again. Is that okay? Because it's very important, and I have more revelation now than I had. Not that I missed God when I shared it before, but now I know. Now I've seen what it is I saw, but in the dream. Remember, I'm raking in the garden, and there's a little garden snake under the rake. You remember this? And then all of a sudden, in the dream, this little snake throws the rake off to the side and becomes a gigantic serpent standing over me, a dragon, serpent, a beast. And as I've shared with you, I wish I could have told you I drew my sword and I cut the beast head off. That didn't happen. In this dream, I started backing up. If you had seen what I saw, you would back up too. You don't plan your dreams, okay? I didn't make this up. So anyway, I'm falling, and I trip over the curb, and I'm lying, and the beast is staring me in the face, and I know that if he strikes me, I'm gone. It's over. Thank God I, I, the dream shifted, the dream. I, all of a sudden, I'm in the barber chair getting a haircut, and the barber's cutting my hair. And then the barber pulls a measuring tape out of his shirt pocket and begins to measure my heart. And so I know what the Lord was saying. We've been groomed. Haircut. We've been groomed. You and I. We've been groomed all of our lives 
for this moment in history. He's been preparing us. He sent us into battles with creatures that we thought were the real thing. They were just the elementary principles. But before it's all done, there's going to be a church that's going to demonstrate to the principalities and the powers the manifold wisdom of God. We've been groomed. And also, you know what it ultimately is about? Our heart. The ultimate issue not how many dragons you've cut the heads off of. It's the heart that's going to matter when it's all said and done. So we're being prepared. you got to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Too much is given, much is required. The American church has had more of the gospel preached to it than... There's no question. Any generation in the history of humanity... And too much is given, much is required. But I believe too much is required. We've said this before too. Much grace will be given to do what is required. How do I know that? First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Therefore gird up the loins of your minds. Another version says prepare your mind for action. Prepare your mind for action. Be sober. Be alert. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you, listen, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? So at the revelation, when He is being revealed, when He's being uh, uncovered for all the world to see, there will be a grace given to the church during that season and that time. It's going to take action. Did, y'all get, did you get to read the letter by General Flynn? He said, yes, we must pray, but it's a time for action. Because America right now is just on the balancing. It's just hanging by a thread. And then the next thing about the beast. Now you might say, is this the beast system? You know, I've been debating. I've been, I was asking the Lord yesterday, God, is this the beast? Or is this a type of the beast? We may have to change mics if you want to do that, but we have. Okay, okay, so let's just go right ahead and edit that part out. Don't mess this up. He can do it. He can do wonders. Anyway, I would expect some interference. I would expect an earthquake on the day that I'm preaching on this subject. I pray the whole nation shakes with the power of God in this hour. It's the only way we're going to be awakened. It's the only way. And I'm not, I'm an American, but I'm a kingdom citizen. So you you can shake this nation. You you can set up barricades. You can close the borders. That's their plan. Close the borders. Can you believe the people that didn't want any borders now want to close the borders? Of the states. So you won't travel from one state to another. It's hideous. And so we're going to keep shouting. And do you know, Jesus said there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Nothing. He's going to expose it all. Okay. The beast system, verse, uh, verse 2, B, the beast system is Satan's representative on the earth doing the bidding of their father, the devil. How do I know that? The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. He will be empowered. They will be empowered by their father. You know, ultimately, you're going to do the will of your father, one or the other. I heard someone say it this way. Every day, everybody on the planet is either becoming more and more a part of the Lord Jesus Christ or they're becoming more and more a part of the system of Antichrist. The sons of men will either be the sons of God or they'll be the sons of disobedience. How do I know that? Jesus said, either you're for me or you are against me. You're not going to be allowed to live in the gray area in this hour. 
If God is God, follow Him. If Baal is God, follow Baal. And many are going to line up to follow Baal. And then, number four, the beast system is not easily killed. Look in verse, chapter, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed. In other words, this is not... Can you uh, just think about... Okay, here we go. Let's all pray together today. We're all in agreement. Two or more gather together. And let's bind up the beast system over America and over the earth. In, okay, in the name of Jesus, we bind up the beast system in Jesus. Do you really think that would work? How many of you think that's going to work? How many of you think it's going to work? You see any example in the Scripture? Any, anybody? He's not easily killed. Somebody shared with me a vision they saw last week. But it's presumptuous men, foolish There's some things God's going to have to take care of, and God is going to take care of it. You ever, you know, let me put it this way. We want to vote for the right people in this coming election. If we get to have an election, there's a plan to disrupt it. That's why we pray. This, now this, we can take authority over. This, we can bind. The rottenness of men and the evil dealings of wicked people. They were possessed by the spirit of Antichrist. You know, we can do that, but it's going to take more. But anyway, whoever we vote for, how many of you know, it's not going to change that much. I mean, men and women are going to do some things. This is God. It, it's, it's not the election. It's the elect. It's not the White House. It's God's house. The answer must come from God's house. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. It's a supernatural battle. You ever notice there's some things you pray and they just won't go away? Sometimes God, I heard people say, He says, yes, no, and wait. I don't like wait more than probably no. You know what I mean? Sometimes wait is hard. How many of you know it's hard? But more than that, you know, God is, He either wants to change us through the situations we go through. He wants to teach us something. He wants us, wants us to become something. Can, let me ask you, do you, is there anything you can think of we should become in this hour if we're going to be facing the beast system? How about the sons of God? What is all creation waiting for? That's another reason creation is shaking. They're waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. I don't think I answered that question earlier. Is this the beast system? I don't know. But I can tell you in what we're facing right now, if the beast system is worse than what we're about to face, folks, we've got to grow up. We've got to be the church. Wimpy Christians are going to be spotted for miles. You'll be able to spot them for miles. Can't be fearful either. You're going to have to know what the Bible says about fear. The whole world is going to be caught up in fear. Men's hearts are going to fail them from fear. But you don't have to be among that number. Amen. Perfect love cast out all fear. God has not given me a spirit of timidity or fear. Love, power, and a sound mind. Okay, the next thing. Look in verse 3. I'm going to get through it. It's, it's going to move. Oh, I've only got a few more minutes. You guys with me? We'll go fast. Because I promise I'm going to pray for people. And but this is the scripture that has... Amazed me for years. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. In other words, the beast system is going to be a global attraction. People will be marveled, astounded. There will be a demonic influence, almost a demonic, some kind of transference that's going to give them and make them wonder. They will wonder about the things that the beast is up to, though they will not be able to know that the beast is up to it. It will be a global promise citizens of the world 
And it'll, it'll appear to have all the answers that men have ever been looking for. And then the next thing in verse 4, the number 6, they worship the dragon. They worship Satan. What did we find out about Karl Marx last week? There are groups in America operating on our streets. If you look up, they are actually Marxist groups. Their plan is the destruction of our nation. They are Marxists. And we looked up who their father was, Karl Marx. And you know what we found out? He was a Satanist. He worshiped Satan. We find out if you study, most, if not all, of the communist leaders were Satanists. Now, I've got to mention this. When that earthquake hit this morning, somebody sent me a little short clip of a man. I believe he was the producer or part of the team that produced Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans? You guys remember. And also Hunger Games. This guy. And anyway, he said he produced a movie about pedophilia and sex trafficking among children going on. And Amazon took it off. They don't want anybody to see it. And he was asking the people. He said, listen, if there's one thing we can, can, we can unite around, whether you're left or right or conservative or liberal, un- unite around this. And, I, and he said, most people don't even know it's happening. Children. And how is it happening? It's among Satanists that are embedded in this nation. I wish I could tell you more. And one day, maybe, when I learn more, we'll tell you more. But anyway, the earthquake, and I just, it happened at that very moment. I said, God, shake this thing. If, this, if what this man who wrote the Hunger Games and all this stuff, if, what, if he said's real, God, shake it out of America. Expose every pedophile, every child trafficker. Break it up. Break it up. In the name of Jesus. We can pray that. He said it's a billion, it's, I've read it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And children are being treated the most unbelievable. They're being bred. Ah, oh, this is amazing. You know, they got rid of, what's the guy they killed? Yeah, Epstein. He knew too much. Now this lady, I tell you what, I'm, I'm putting my trust in Jesus He said, nothing is covered that would not be revealed. I'm going to pray that prayer. Joseph Stalin, whose reign of death and terror for over 20 years resulted in the death of millions of people, mostly because of his policies that created famine in the land. His policies were the policies of the Antichrist. He wanted to be the Antichrist. Joseph Stalin opened up prison camps, and we know the rest of the story. He was one of the types. But anyway, the whole world will worship and follow the dragon. This is what Satan has always wanted, isn't it? He wanted God's creation to reject God and worship him. In the end of the age, there will be one final push to cause that to come to pass. According to Revelation chapter 13, everyone on the planet will worship and follow the beast except for a group of people. Now, verse 4 and B, who is like, he says, who is like, who will make war with the beast? In other words, the beast will be like any, anything the world has ever known before. A great military might, all the militaries of the world. And uh, people will want to be a part of that, unmatched in power. He will demand allegiance. And the only way to overcome It's to know the greater one that's in you. In John, 1 John chapter 2, in the context of the Antichrist, that's the context of that scripture. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You better know the greater one. You better know, you better belong to him and you better know him. And then verse 5, the beast will be vile, blasphemous, vicious, perverted. You will hear some of the most vile blasphemy, mockery against three groups of people, God, the people of God, and the purposes of God. If you see in chapter 12, verse 15, he was granted power 
to give, to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast to be killed. He will speak. If you back up chapter 12 and verse 15 too. The serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood. I grew up in Louisiana where we had floods all the time. We've been having floods here. It's been raining every day. I've been thinking it's ridiculous. How many of you? You know, there's so much rain. You know, we've been under flood watches. Now, there's a difference in a flood watch and a flood warning. A flood watch, you just watch. <laughs> you watch. It might happen. Flood warning, take cover. Same thing in a hurricane. When there's a hurricane watch... Me and my brothers, we'd watch through the window. We'd watch hurricane warning. You might want to get out away from the window because the trees might come flying through and hit you in the face, and that would be the last time that happened. <laughs> anyway, we've got to raise a standard. He's going to be vile. We're going to speak the truth. He's going to be vocal. He's on every network, 24 hours a day. I could tell you so much about this, but you already know it. But we got to speak. It's not the time to be quiet. Remember, 2020 in the Hebrew is the year to open your mouth, not close it. It's incredible. And then verse 5, he, he continues for 42 months. What does that mean? It means 42 months. I don't know. I'm sure there's a whole lot in there that we're not going to get to. And maybe you have the ultimate revelation. All I know is, is 42 months does not mean from here and now and forever. It only means to me that the beast system will only have a limited time. How do I know that in the rest of Scripture? Because Scripture confirms Scripture. Because Satan knows only that he has what? A short time. So number one, he has time. But number two, it's only short. And I could read this. You should go read it later. First Thessalonians, we talked about when this system rises up. You know, he will be consumed by the breath of the Lord's mouth and destroyed at his coming. I believe the consuming is the church rising up, declaring the word of God. And then ultimately the, ult the final destruction will come when the Lord comes back himself. Amen. And he will throw him into the bottomless pit. Man, this is good. I want to remind him of his destiny. And then back to Revelation 13. He will be against God, against the tabernacle, his people, and all of heaven. Now, you know, I've been hearing there's a whole lot more about this great cloud of witnesses than you and I give that scripture credit. You know what I mean? And I know there's a host of, there's more for us than against us. So we need the host of heaven. We need a host of angelic beings working with us, operating with us at this season and time of history. How I many of you know that? And the scriptures confirm that. Open your eyes and there were angels all in the field. You know, right before, maybe it's the same day that Michael died, Michael Lauderdale, our good friend, Jan and I were speaking and she said, you know, I've got it. I believe Michael's being summoned to be a part of the council of heaven for the last days. And I agreed. I agree more now than I did then. I don't know how all this is going to wind up. I just know heaven is for us. Hell is against us. But I know at the end of the day, who wins? He's Lord of the host. Lord of heavens. And then verse 7, the beast system for a season will over. Now, this is the scripture we pass over. This is the one a lot of people would rather cut out of the Bible. But I'm not going to cut it out. Verse 7, and it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to what? To overcome them. And authority was given over every tribe, tongue, and nation. It's a global Affair. Now that's an interesting scripture. All authority was given. I don't know anybody that teaches this. I wonder if it has anything to do with the other parts of scripture that says, He that endures to the end. We're to endure all things. What does all things mean? This is the hour not to drop out, it's not the hour to be offended. The apostasy 
will be flooded with offended people because it didn't work out the way they thought it was going to work out. Or their own theological understanding of things. And everybody has it all put together and lined up. God's going to blow them all away. Do you know when he said everything will be shaken that can be shaken? That's every theological standpoint known to man. Everything. I'm amazed people think they have it figured out. The Lord one time spoke to my heart. He said, there will be people who will put more confidence and trust and they will have more passion about the coming of the Lord than they do the Lord that's coming. And they will be deceived because they have a God, an idol that they've erected before Him. Now, you know, I would rather a pain-free gospel. But how many of you know it's not pain-free? How many of you know believers all through history have gone through times of suffering? They've gone through times, if you would have told them, you're not going to go through the tribulation, they would have laughed you in the face. Say, buddy, look what I've gone through. I lost my son. I lost my daughter. I had to watch my wife being raped, murdered. I lost everything. How harder could the tribulation be? It's not going to be pain-free. I just know there's good news in the midst of the pain. I know that Satan only has a short time. And I know that the kingdom of God endures forever. I wonder if this is why verse 9 and verse 10 says, He, or here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Endurance. Say endurance. You're going to have to learn to endure. Okay, the next thing. See, I'm already at number 13. If I skip some, I'll give you the notes. I'm still getting it. There's a lot more to get. I mean, if you know that, it's not the whole subject. So I know some have learned some other things. It's okay. You can be wrong. No, no, I don't know. All I know is what God's Word says. At the end of the day, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. All I know is what God said, and God, I know that I'm following Him. And I know that He'll be faithful. I know that He said the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. And I don't know all the truth now. Those who claim to know all the truth probably don't know the truth. In fact, the truth is not all the, the stats and the figures. The truth is a person. I'm following a person. His name is Jesus. He will not fail me. And he'll not fail you. And that's what the next number 13 is. The beast will arise and he will be a great deceiver. Look in verse 11. And he talks about what he's like, but look in verse 14. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth. In other words, the beast system will be filled with lies and lies and lies and lies and more lies. It will be fake, a fake gospel, fake promises. Fake, fake, fake. The world will follow the fake. You know, the greatest deception is when the enemy allows a little truth mixed in with a big lie. You get big deception that way. How many of you know that? A little truth, but a big lie. The big lie is what's going to grab the people. And that's why we have to love the truth, speak the truth, point men and women to the truth. And then verse 15, he was granted to power to give breath to the image, and as many as would not worship the image of the beast, they would be killed. In other words, there's going to be the pressure and the demand by the beast system. We need to understand to conform, to comply, to compromise. Confusion, corruption, censorship. That's what Amazon did. Every time a doctor comes out online saying we have a solution to COVID-19, we have found the cure, they are blackballed and removed. Why? Because if their truth gets out, it will mess up their plan. They must destroy everybody that stands in the way. And the system will be comply. If you don't comply, you're gonna, I'm telling you, they're going to come after you. Your own family members. 
You know, Jesus said, your enemies will become those of your own household. He must have been looking at this day. You don't comply, they'll, they're coming after you. Because they will think they're doing God a favor. And if they get rid of you, then they're saving themselves. Oh, I'm telling you guys, it's the beast sitting... No, that's the Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist sitting on the throne, declaring that he himself is God. Oh, man. Lord, show us more. So what are we to do? We're not to conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then the last one. Now, this is going to take some more getting into. But he causes all, both small and rich, free and slave, to receive a mark. Gorbachev... He had a mark. <laughs> but anyway, it's amazing what men and women come up with. But anyway, no one will be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark. And you know, that's not the only thing they deal with in this scripture. How many of you know that? It's not the only thing. People are saying, How will I know it's the mark of the beast? Well, look what else is in that scripture. That no one may buy or sell except those who have the mark. Or. What does or mean? Or. Or the name of the beast. Or the number of his name. And then he describes the number 666. Men magnified in rebellion Okay, now we got to start wrapping this up. There's going to be a one-world religion eventually. You know it's in the works. It's in the works. You start telling people Jesus is the only way, they're going to show you the door. Or plaster you against the door, I mean, whatever. Hang you above the door, whatever. You're not going to be liked if you have the narrow way. But what did Jesus say? He said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many that go by that. But narrow is the way that leads to life, and difficult and few there be that find it. The beast system is a one world religion, a global government. The beast system will be set up. If you don't cooperate or participate, you will not be able to buy or sell there. Now, that gets me back to that question. God, is, is this the beast system? Or is this maybe a type of the beast system? We'll let him figure that out. All I know is we need to know the times in which we're living. And we need to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. We need to get our direction from above. Our orders from heaven. Those who are the sons of God. You're a real son of God. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. They'll not turn to the right or to the left. But they will follow his voice. Another voice they'll not follow. They know the voice of their shepherd. And they'll follow him. Well, we're going to have to wait for another day. What happens if you take the mark? But it just sounds like to me, you're going to have, it's going to mean you're going to need endurance. Going to keep the commandments of God. And you're going to have to have the faith of Jesus. And guess what? We're going to have it. Daniel chapter 12. And then we close. Daniel 12. Did some of this make sense? There's a whole... This would take another... Uh, Daniel 11 and 12 is so much of the Antichrist spirit. And I believe the beast system. It's all there. Read the book. Read the book. People say, God's not speaking to me. I don't know anything about that. Read God's book. Read the Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. He'll speak to you like He speaks to me or any of us. He's no respecter of persons. There are no superstars. There's one superstar in this hour. His name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. I met with a group of pastors on Friday. One of them said when the winds came through in one of these storms, it blew the lights down that were pointing toward the church. 
They said, we think we've, we understand what God is saying. The light is no more to be on the church. It's on the Son of the living God. It's on the people that are following Him. It's not a building. Not about a building. What if He closes all the buildings? The church of Jesus Christ will march on. The saints are going to go marching on. And in. But the saints are going to be on the earth. Now, Daniel chapter 12 I'm just going to read this, then we'll close. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Every one who is found written in the book. By the way, Revelation chapter 13, we didn't get there. But it talks about all of those will worship the beast except for a group of people. Who is that? Those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. That's why it's in that scripture like that, so that there would be no mistake. This is not just some random Messiah. This is the Lamb of glory that was slain, died on the cross, slain from the foundation of the world, and rose from the dead. No mistake about it. It's Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And then verse 2, and many of those who sleep, this is that ultimate destiny that we talked about earlier, in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt or judgment. And then those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And I wish I could... Keep reading. There's so much more. But he goes on and says, Daniel, go your way. Go your way. Stay on the course. Stay on the path. You have an inheritance. That last verse of that chapter talks about the inheritance for the people of God. The wicked are going to do wickedly, and the wicked will not understand what's going on. They'll think they're on the right course. But the righteous will understand, And he will deliver and he will show himself strong. Amen. Amen. This is the greatest hour in history to be alive. I don't know if this is the ultimate beast. It's the type of the beast, the type of the Antichrist. It sure looks like it to me. And you might want to be right with Jesus. That might be the main thing. Regardless. My own opinion is we can break this Deception up if enough people will awake and pray and stand on the Scripture, do the imprecatory prayers out of Psalms. We can smash this plan. I think he's overextended his hand. That's my own feeling. I think it's not supposed to be yet. I think Bill Gates is a fraud and a phony. And I believe God has a better plan and a better way. And I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to believe that we can tear this thing up. I'm a son of God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's taunting the armies of the living God? Who is he? Who does he think he is causing fear? Trying to rob my son and my daughter and my grandchildren's future. Their inheritance. You're going to have to be a little radical in these hours, guys. Can't be a wimp. If we don't have it all figured out, so what? I don't think we're going to get it all figured out. Those who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Not know everything to do or what the situation, which is right and which is wrong. Even the elect can be deceived. How many of you know that? So we follow the truth. The one who is the way, the truth And the life, and that is the most important decision you will ever make. So I'm going to pray this morning. If you are watching, if you're here and you've never surrendered to Jesus, my friend, what are you waiting for? If you can't see the signs of the times, then listen, man. This today is the day of salvation. I'm just going to say, today is the day of salvation. What must I do to be saved? This is the hour that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead. If you're willing to turn your life over to him, 
Repentance, what does that mean? It means that you have sinned. You say, I've sinned, and I'm turning from my sin, and I'm turning to follow Jesus. I'm going to follow him, though none go with me, yet I still will follow. I'm not going to turn back. You just call on him. No one can come to him when they choose to. The Holy Spirit draws us. There's a drawing right now all over the earth. People are being drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's being lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. You know, when this fight is over, the beast ain't going to be standing. The Antichrist ain't going to be standing. Whoever he is, Pope Leo, Pope Constant, whoever, Barney the dinosaur, whoever it is, there's only going to be one standing, and it's not the anti, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to just pray with you right now. And, and, um, but you need to receive Jesus, my friends. If the Holy Spirit's drawing you, convicting you, just pray this in this room or are you watching. Just say, dear Jesus. Let's pray it out loud to reconfirm our faith. Say, dear Jesus, I need you. Dear God, I need you. And I come to you this day. I confess my sin. I ask for your forgiveness. I confess that I've turned my own way. And I ask you to forgive me. I thank you that Jesus died on the cross. That he shed his blood. And he rose from the dead. And he lives today. And now I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And now by faith, I turn to you. I give you my life. I give you my past. I give you my future. I give you my all. By faith, I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the power of God. And help me to live for you. The rest of my days. In Jesus' name. I just want to say if you watch or you're in this room, we're going to open the altar. We're going to pray for people. We want you to come. We're going to pray for a lot of people. Then we're going to have baptism. If you'd like to be baptized, baptized, see Shirley. But if you watch it online and you prayed that prayer, we have a way you can connect with us. Let us know so we can send you a little booklet that we have, you know, that we can send your way. But you, here's what you do. Email 2020, the number, 2020, 2020, and then the letters, all small letters, trust in, I-N, Jesus, at gmail.com. It took me forever to find that because all of them were taken. But that was available. 2020, trust I in Jesus. 2020, trust in Jesus at gmail.com. And we'll send you the information so you can get rooted and planted in a good home fellowship. I don't know if the churches are going to be around. Churches are under attack. You follow Christ, you might get under attack. But I'm telling you, it'd be better to be on his side. Because if you're for him, he'll be for you. You will overcome because greater is he that will live in you than he that lives in this world. And you'll find it. You'll discover it. The greater one lives in you. So anyway, thank you, God, for this day. Bless the people. Touch everyone right now. God, I pray for miracles, signs, and wonders. Thank you, Lord, that you rule and reign on the earth. And we're going to follow you. God, I thank you for a special group of people that have endured thick and thin hell and high water. I don't know all they've been through in their journey. Some of them, their spouse deserted them. Some of them lost everything. Some of them, they have nothing left but you. And I just ask you, God, to show them if they have you, they have it all. They have what the world will never give and the world will never take away. God, I ask you for miracles. Lord, I pray for cancers today to be dissolved in Jesus' name. God, we cry out. I pray for my friend Mike. and There's so many, God, I pray for miracles. 
Lord, we do have authority over that kind of stuff. You said lay hands on the sick and they would recover. You said cast out demons, preach the gospel, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. God, we pray for the power of Jesus right now to touch people in this room, touch people watching by way of the web stream. God, we ask you, pour out your spirit in America.